Your Excellency, the, I want to talk about Sudan now. I, I thought we had solved the Sudan issue when we got the independence of South Sudan. But all of a sudden now there is fighting in some province and uh, the AU has intervened in asking South Sudan to pull back forces and all of that. And when people thought initially that it was Sudan proper that may be or may have been responsible for much of the aggression we've seen before. But what is happening in South Sudan and, well, in Sudan in general? Well, let's, the Sudan, there are many aspects to the Sudanese uh, crisis. First, we have the north-south you know, Southern Sudan, uh, uh, Sudan uh, uh, crisis, which, as you have said, you know, referendum occurred, uh, South Sudan is an independent country, but then there are problems of the transition uh, to the separation because there are some issues post-independence that need to be resolved. One of the problems, frankly, is the issue of the province of Abe, which was never resolved. The understanding being that after independence, there will be continuing negotiations on how to solve it. Uh, of course, things have come to a head now because all this fighting is over trying to stake positions, uh, perhaps in the negotiation on the fate of this province which is lying between north and south. That's one aspect of it. The, aspect, the other aspect is over uh, revenue sharing because, uh, as you know, the bulk of the oil was being produced in areas that are now in the state uh, of South Sudan, the Republic of South Sudan, but then the pipeline for the oil is all going through the north. There has to be agreement on the rates to be charged, etc., etc. There have been some issues over, so what happens to the debt that th the state of Sudan owed? How is that going to be distributed between North and South? Um, so there are those kinds of issues which I'm aware the, 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 the uh, AU, working closely with the UN, was dealing with trying the mediation, uh, to using the mediation of former South African President Tabombeki. And um, he's still, you know, quite very uh, active uh, in this. But don't forget, there's also the old issue of Darfur, you know, which is still yes. there. And then some other provinces in rebellion, like Kordofan, etc. But I, I think that the, 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 the crisis now is over, the relations between Republic of Sudan and North Sudan. And one can only uh, plead uh, that... Uh, the two countries should use negotiation uh, and compromise to resolve their differences. Absolutely. Now, they, we've um, uh, tried to handle some of these conflict issues. Now, you mentioned earlier when you were uh, uh, making some remarks that we are making progress in Africa, mm -hmm. and I agree that we are making progress. Countries like Rwanda, for example, sure. where the president, uh, Paul Kagame, mm -hmm. has said recently that their poverty rate has dropped sharply. Mm -hmm. You know, they, so that country stands out as, as a shining star mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. Botswana also mm -hmm. appears to be doing very well. Mm -hmm. You've got about 48 African countries mm -hmm. in the ACP, That's which you had. Um, the, the, what, what are the burning issues outside of trade in terms of just mm -hmm. development? Mm -hmm. Are there lessons that you are picking up from exemplary countries like Botswana, like Rwanda, like others, and also perhaps in mm -hmm. the uh, Caribbean and Pacific mm -hmm. countries. Do, can you tell mm -hmm. us, are there any models that you see there amongst your members, you know, that other African countries uh, can look at as no, we no, the, strive I mean, to make progress? Uh, yeah, that's one of the objectives that the group set for itself. Uh, we co I mean, we talk about South-South cooperation. Yes. South-South cooperation is nothing but learning from each other, sharing best practices you know, sharing experiences. And indeed, in each of our regions, we have countries that are doing very well. And we believe that by nature of belonging to a common family of, of states, when some are doing well and prospering, naturally, it leads to interrogation. What is it that they are doing yeah. that is producing results, good results, uh, impact on poverty levels in these countries, improvement in infrastructure, improvements 
in, in governance. Uh, and uh, therefore, I uh, would like to believe that those uh, that are perhaps not doing so well will be motivated to, to share, uh, to learn the good lessons, the good practices of those that are, are prospering. And it's true that in all the regions, you have some countries that are doing extremely well. Of course, uh, what is also true is that on the whole, the Caribbean, as a, as a group within the ACP, are relatively doing quite well. What, what yeah. accounts for that? that why, why are they so Well, why sometimes they I think the issue so of positively. size, yeah. this, this, the, the issue of size okay. is one. You can even say location. The Caribbean, being so close to North America, yeah. being tourism-oriented economies, you know, next to huge economies that can patronize the tourism and service uh, industry, service sector of these countries has helped. There's no question of that. But it goes back to governance. Mm. Um, we both attained independence about the same time. Indeed, some of many of the Caribbean countries later than Africa, but they've had stability. Yes. They've had yes. consistent peace, security, stability, democratic governance. Yes. So I think that's one additional case that governance is important. Uh, as l once they maintain the stability, it means that they have just built and built and consolidated. In Africa, as you know, the story was that soon after independence, there was all that hope and optimism, and yes, there was some relative pro But then when the instability and the constant changes came, what we then did was to systematically destroy a lot of the foundation yeah. that, that was and established and yeah. built, and instead of standing on that foundation and moving to next level. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, trade, which I believe is one mm -hmm. of the key areas that you look at, it, are the... Is, is the ACP helping to get progress, you know, vis-a-vis -vis our balance with advanced economies in, in terms of what we get from trade relations and, mm -hmm. and, um, and arrangements? Indeed, the, this is probably one of the strongest added value that the ACP uh, brings uh, because over the years we have uh, concentrated on our role as uh, leading in the trade negotiations and working for a, a, a smooth integration of our member states into global trade because yes. we're still pretty marginalized. Uh, so in that respect, vis-a-vis -vis Europe, the ACP as a group has been the main vehicle for ensuring what we have enjoyed for some time now with Europe, which is uh, quota-free, duty-free access to the European market, which is a significant uh, market. Uh, we also, of course, play in our role in the economic partnership agreement, which is essentially a trade negotiation to allow for continued uh, privileged access to the European uh, market. Those negotiations have by no means been smooth, but we continue to coordinate the position of Caribbean countries, the Pacific countries, and of course Africa to uh, advocate a uh, common position for the least developed countries, uh, majority of whom are in the ACP, but also for middle income countries w which don't have such an easy access because of threat to remove certain uh, privileges, certain um, uh, facilitation that is otherwise ag allowed them because there's a perception that they have made it, they've attained yeah. middle income status yeah. and therefore should not enjoy certain uh, trade uh, benefits that uh, otherwise would have been made available. Thank you very much. I, but I would be, it, it wouldn't be right if I ended this discussion mm -hmm. without talking a little bit about Ghana. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, th this year there's going to be a very, to me, very important election in Ghana. Yeah. And it's important in my view because of mm -hmm. the vast amount of oil mm. that Ghana sits on now sure. and the fortunes mm. that are going to come from that. Mm. And I think that the, the, the MPP, the NTC, mm. uh, the mm. parties mm. recognize that whoever sits on it now mm. may have, well, may present mm. such a size mm. and such a uh, muscularity mm. that it would be difficult for the opposition to mm. dislodge them. Mm. So this is an important election mm. between the president, mm. President mm. Tamils mm. and uh, Nana Kufuadu. Mm. What, what are the sentiments in Ghana? What